Um, my name is Mary Ann Borge. I'm a naturalist here at Bowens Hill Wildflower Preserve, and this is spring, and spring is beautiful here. Um, we're on the way down the Perry Trail from the Visitor Center, and we stopped to take a look at the Cutleaf Tooth Wart um, because I happen to like it. It's a member of the mustard family, and it has flowers that are typical of the mustard family. Four petals, usually in sort of a cross shape. Uh, it's one of our native mustards, and one of the interesting things about it is the fact that there are butterflies that depend on our native mustards. Um, a lot of people know that monarch butterflies depend on milkweeds, that their caterpillars can only eat the leaves of milkweeds. What they don't know is that most butterflies and moths specialize on some relatively small subset of the plants that are available. And cutleaf toothwort and some of our other native mustards are used by uh, a group of small white butterflies as their only caterpillar food. So those butterflies are only active for about the same length of time that these plants are, um, are active, are above ground. They're true spring ephemerals, which means that they emerge from the ground, they bloom, they set seed, and they die back all before the tree canopy leaves out. So the butterfly's life cycle actually mirrors the life cycle of this plant. And if we didn't have these native mustards, we wouldn't have these butterflies. This is a, a plant that you'll see on trails, local trails uh, around you. It's something that's pretty deer resistant. It is a mustard family member. So you'll even see it in uh, woodland areas that have deer present. Um, and look for a little white butterfly with sort of a marble gray uh, color on the outside of the wings. And the males have an orange tip. It's called an orange tip falcate. This is called cut leaf toothwort. Um, cut leaf because the leaves are deeply lobed. Uh, toothwort because on the root system, the underground rhizomes, there are little projections that look like teeth and the plant was used to uh, treat toothaches and sore throats and things like that. This is kind of a neat little plant. It's, um, it offers nectar and pollen to lots of different pollinators. Um, primarily it would be bees or flies or bee flies that would be visiting this, this plant for the rewards it provides. So the bluebells, Virginia bluebells, are one of the big attractions here at the Wildflower Preserve in the spring. Um, interestingly, their buds begin as pink and as the flowers start to open, the flowers change color to blue. Um, it's a signal to the potential pollinators that the flowers are open for business. There's nectar and pollen to be had here. Um, so time isn't wasted on the little pink buds. Um, the blue color is very attractive to the most likely pollinator for these plants, which would be queen bumblebees, the large bumblebees that you see flying at this time of the year. When you look at the structure of the flower, there's a long tube here, and the pollinator who's gonna be successful here in getting a reward has to have a tongue long enough to get to the tip of that tube in order to be able to get the nectar. And when they do that, they're brushing their heads against the plant's reproductive parts, the flower's reproductive parts, picking up pollen or dropping it off. So Virginia bluebells, one of the beauties of spring. So wood poppy has gorgeous yellow flowers. Um, this is another plant that's really pretty deer resistant because, as the name implies, it's actually a member of the poppy family. And it's chock full of narcotics, which makes it not so tasty for deer to eat or other um, herbivores. Um, it actually doesn't produce nectar. It only produces pollen. There's a big cluster of anthers here, the male reproductive parts, that um, produce a lot of pollen. And that's actually enough reward to attract bees or flies to come visit the flowers. And these really attractive flowers are there to um, pull in uh, the potential pollinators. So, and here's, here's a couple now. Um, documentation has it that there's not a lot known about who the pollinators are, but I've actually seen both flies and bees visit these flowers. Um, this plant actually contains a number of chemicals that can be used for medicinal purposes. And it's a plant that's really pretty easy to grow. And it's so successful in both treating some medicinal uh, issues and in um, being an easy to grow plant, there's some thought being given to using it as a commercial product. Um, the sap in the plant is a yellow sap and it's been used for dyes and uh, things like that as well. So, wood pocket.